Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel and this amazing video, I'm Aditya. In this video, which is going to be the last video of this Svelte tutorial series, uh, we will be uh, seeing the concept of routing in Svelte single page application. So without any further ado, let's begin. Okay, so I'll be using this package, which is Svelte Navigator, but there are other packages also. Uh, the reason I'm using this because like personally, I find it uh, easy to use compared to other packages. So I'll be just using this. So what we need to do is first, we need to install this package. Now we can simply install it by going to our command line, making sure that our uh, address over here, it's pointing to our root project of our uh, or root folder of our project. So in this case, my folder is swell tab. So and then uh, once it is pointing over there, we just need to type npm. Uh, I for install or you could just type install and then this package name so swell uh, dash navigator like this now this will install the package and once it is installed what we need to do is we need to use the components that come with the package and then we can have routing in our application now let's start with the very basic routing where we just have two routes one for home so in this case if I click on home it takes me on home page if I click on counter, if you notice in the address bar, we have forward slash counter and we can see our counter component. Now let's see what we need to do to achieve this uh, simple routing. Well, first you need to create, or this is actually a good practice to separate your full page components and components. So in this case, our routes, like in this case, in when we go to the root route or the home page, we see home page component. When we go to the counter, we see counter page component. So these are full page components, which are nothing but your entire web page. So it's a good practice to have them in a separate folder. Uh, generally, I make them in pages folder, but in Svelte kit or which is again framework for Svelte. So there you will might find this is done in routes folder. So here we have pages folder and inside that we have our full page components. Now here I have home.swell, which is of course my home page component or for home. Now here I have just included a simple title, which is this is home page. So if I go over here on home page, if you see this is home page, like simple title, but on the counter.swell, now here I purposely took this as the same with the counter component. Now ideally, it is not a good practice to have same names for your components. Uh, in this case, we have counter in pages also and counter in uh, the components folder also. Ideally, like it's uh, it's not a good practice. It's best to have each component, let's say different name or unique names. But sometimes there might be a need that you might have same name for your components. It could be full page components or like the same name with the full page component and the actual components. Now, how we can solve the problem over here. Now, good thing here is all our components are export default or of type export or of default type export. So in that case, we can simply change the name here saying counter component rather than calling it import counter from lib.counter.swell. Now, when we import it, now swell knows that, okay, this thing refers to the counter component inside the lib folder while our this counter refers to the pages component. So just to avoid any conflict, let's just take a different name for the component if there are name clashes or if they have the same names. In this case, we have this counter component imported from counter.swell and then we just use it as a counter component because we are importing it as a counter component. Perfect. Now this makes our counter page. Now how we can have the navigation? For that, I have created a separate menu, which is a header component, which is inside our lib header dot sweat. Now, what does this component has? Well, so here we have link component coming from the Svelte Navigator package. So if we see what does this render, so if I just inspect this part over here, you will see it renders just a simple anchor tag, which is great. So it just renders a simple anchor tag. Now let's understand how does this routing happens behind the scene. So in this case, let's say when I visit home page, it becomes a root route. When I become counter page, it becomes a counter route or that counter component counter page component is displayed so what happens is ideally when you are using a traditional server side rendered application what happens is when you click a url even though it's an anchor tag when you click that your browser sends request to the server which is generally a get request and fetches the new page that you are asking for in this case let's say if this was a traditional web application which is a server side rendered then if i click a counter route this will make an http request to the 
server asking for on this route there is certain page can you please send me then server will send that and then we will have the separate html for that but in single page application we just have one index.html file and all the routing is handled by the javascript so what happens is when we click on home or any other route our javascript library in this case svelte navigator catches that event that okay uh, we are trying to visit this counter route and then what it does it it swaps the component which is equivalent or which is required to be displayed for this counter route and then also it makes sure that in case if there is an external url that we are asking for let's say google.com then that time at that case it will then send us to a external navigation so if it's an internal navigation it just uh, identifies it and then just simply changes the url in the browser so it all happens on javascript side for a single page application and just renders the component now how does it like what does it use behind the scene to change the url and everything well it simply use HTML history APIs. So HTML history API or HTML5 history web APIs, they allow you to have this uh, behavior where you can change the URL and also have the navigation handled on the client side or in your browser through your JavaScript. So all this is done for us by this Svelte Navigator. Well, now how does this link component knows which component for that particular route we need to render? Now for that, Let's just import our full page routes, which is these two home route, sorry, home page and counter page. They are coming from pages, counter.swell, and home is coming from pages, home.swell. Along with that, we will import two other components from Svelte Navigator, which is route and router. Now, what's happening here? The router is the main, you could say, uh, in simple language, it is the main container or the entire like holding like holding entire of your application which requires routing in this case of course it's going to be your entire application so the router will hold your application now inside this we will need to give routes so for instance each route again is going to be a component so what to do when the path is home then what route to or what component to render that is home component or we could also use another uh, syntax or way where we say okay this path where again this is going to be a prop so for this path where is a counter we want to render a component so we can pass the component either as a prop or we can pass it as a uh like a slot uh because if you remember we saw the concept of slot so if you want to pass something between the component in this case the route component we can use like the route component behind the scene might be using slot of course it's going to use slot so render this home component or we can pass a component prop and then it will render that component properly for us perfect now once this is done then how do, how is it linked with the uh, our header over here now let's see what happens when we take our header outside of this router let's say we put it like this now if we go back and just refresh the page you will see or oh, we need to run this uh, npm run dev now if we refresh the page here uh, let's say go like this you'll see it just displays blank and if we check in our uh, console you'll see link component you cannot use link outside of a router so this means even our nav bar this header needs to be part or needs to needs to be included inside this router component if we don't include that then our routing will not work at all so this router component actually makes sure that everything is is handled well and everything is monitored well so that's why we just need to make sure that our entire app is inside this router component now we just need to see uh, how it works so if you bring in that header component inside again and then we can simply have routes working properly that's great that's perfect now next thing what if we need to pass parameters to our component let's say uh, to this counter component we want to pass certain parameters so let's i guess we are taking some uh, props to our counter component over here uh, okay we are not taking any prop fine let's take a prop over here let's say we want to start with a initial count so let's say something like this export let initial count and let's make it at zero and let's start our initial count as uh, our initial count and then we can simply uh, pass initial count as a prop uh, to this counters dot sweat. Now, how can we, let's say we want to pass this as also a URL parameter. So how can we pass it as a URL parameter? So let's go to app dot 
let's close this for a moment and here we can have something like this call them uh, let's see count which could be initial count so here we could pass the url parameter now we need to catch this url parameter and have to pass it to this counter component which is the counter page component so what we could do is we can bring in the counter page component like this and here we can pass the initial count and then we can pass the count over here now how to know where is this count coming from well we can use the params that comes with this route component so we could say uh, params dot count the like parameters dot count and then what we need to do is just need to make sure that this count is similar to or has the same name with whatever parameter we are passing because this is a url parameter now next thing we need to go to our counter page component of course we need to take that prop over here so export let initial count and then we simply pass that initial count over here initial count initial count now let's give it a try so you can counter now that counter route won't work because of course we haven't defined that route so we need to pass a parameter let's pass 15 so here you see the counter started from 15 when we pass 15 one five now if you also want to make that counter work well that becomes part of our nested route so in that case what we could do is we could have something like this so here we could say route then forward slash sorry path if the path is let's say counter then we just need to render a component but we want and like uh let's say nested routes let's say counter and then something then we could have something like this now let's give this a try and see what happens so here we can just simply pass a title component or let's just do something like this uh, title let's import this i guess it's already imported oh no it's not import oh it's here so let's import this and here we could say content this is root level counter route or parent of the counter route because we have counter and then forward slash whatever it is this is like a nested route so this root level counter route we don't need this like this we can just forward slash count mm, let's do this and we can have okay so here if we want to have the nested routes then we just need to follow uh, the syntax in this way so we have counter and then a wildcard over here so for root path we have this so if we someone visit forward slash counter they will see this when they visit something like forward slash counter and a number they will see this uh, element or this component so let's give it a try so if we visit counter this is a root level counter route and now if we visit 15 or let's say 4 you will see like count is 4 and we have that component starting from or with the initial prop of 4 now what if we want to have navigation through our javascript because sometimes you might have let's say when someone uh, like clicked a button then you want to navigate them or sometimes an api call is made and then you want to navigate them so something like this we need to have in our component as well well pretty simple we just need to first use we can use this uh, functions which is use navigate there are other functions also so if i check the documentation over here uh, at the top over here uh, okay so we have hooks like use navigate use location use resolve use match use params use focus so let's start with the use navigate so here we could do uh, let's say inside our home dot swell after some time we want to navigate to counter so here i'm going to say use navigate uh, navigate that's gonna come from swell navigator and then we could say comments navigate navigate equal to use navigate now let's say after 10 sec 5 seconds we want to navigate to some page let's say in this case counter page so here we could say after 5 seconds navigate to counter so let's see if this works so let's go to our home page now so home then five four three two one boom 
there you go so we are at the counter component so in this way we can have navigation through javascript as well so uh, also we can get the parameters so in case if you don't want to pass them as a prop you can get them as using use params so let's give it a try so in this case if i go back over here we are passing them as a props over here like this initial count so let's say we don't want to do something like this and we want to pass it like we want to take it without using any prop so here we could do something like this so import use params from swelt navigator then we can have const params equal to use params and then we can have let initial count equal to params dot uh, count because that's the parameter we are looking for now here it will throw an error saying that count does not exit on the route params there we go so you just need to use dollar params and now here we can just say uh, initial count was initial count uh, Okay, so this is going to be a number. So in this end, and then there we go. So now it should all work fine. So let's give it a try. So if we go back over here, let's try 15, and there we go. We have 15. So we can also get parameters using use params, and we just need to make sure that we are using dollar params rather than params. Okay, so that's all in this video and also this series hope you enjoy this series let me know in the section uh in the comment section like what would be improved or what would you like to see next so see you in the next series on the video till the next time goodbye